Hey, what's up everyone, Mark Croson here, and today we're gonna to be breaking down Su Bing Chen's 983 from the Olympic semi-final, and we're gonna start the video right now. Hey, my name is Mark Croson, and this is the Performance Lab. Reach your individual goals. You don't wanna just talk about straight line speed. We also wanna talk about your ability to be quick. We break down the door video, and let's make you into the quarterback I know you can become. All right, so this has turned out to be a truly incredible race, not only because Su Bing Chen here broke the Chinese record with his 983, but it also has turned out to be the fastest 60 meter um, really ever and really the fastest 30 meter ever as well. The 60 meter, I believe it was a 629 is what they said. His, uh, his 60 meter was, I'm looking it up here real quick. Yeah, 629. Um, and, and that at the time is faster. I think that Usain Bolt ran like a 632 when he ran his 958, right? So he actually is faster in the first 60 than Usain Bolt was when he broke that world record. So, and at the time, um, you know, that was the fastest 60. So, you know, Su Bing Chen really did an amazing job here. We want to get into some of the mechanics, some of the things that he did to be able to separate himself. We all know that Marcel Jacobs ended up winning the Olympic gold here. We also have Ronnie Baker. You know, they both did really well here as well in this, in this race. So this ended up being a super competitive race here. And, you know, really, Su Bing Chen, if when you first kind of watched it, you kind of thought, like, did he get a false start? But when you go and slow it down, he really did. He just did a great job of getting that front foot down. Look how fast he got that front foot down. Everybody else is still stuck with their foot up above or up in, into the air, and he's already getting that front foot down. Now he's already off the ground, too. All these guys are still stuck on the ground here. He's almost up off the ground, but he's already off the ground, down with that second step. Transitioning, now he's down with his third step. That third step, you'll see, the lands at four, nine, seven, five, and is off at five, oh, nine, eight. So let's see, it's about 1.2 there. Maybe a little bit more, 1.2, uh, 1 1.2, 1.3, in terms of how much time that was spent on the ground with that last, with that step right there, that third step. And, and that's really important here, because what he did is he did a great job of getting out one, two, three. So now he already knows he's in the lead within those first three steps. He was so quick with those first three steps and did a great job keeping his weight underneath them. And now he really starts to kind of reach more. Like he starts to really try to get out in front of everybody. And I think it helps him out because he's a little bit shorter in, in general too. But you know, in this position, he's already in, in a place where he's like really putting a big focus on driving out and getting out in front of everybody. And is really landing with his legs pretty straight up. You know, it's pretty straight even at this point, right? So he really got a great acceleration out. And part of the reason that he did that, if you watch, you know, he does a great job here of maintaining a very outward position and is very quick with the arms. Look how fast he gets that left arm up and then pulls right back through in comparison to everybody else, right? He's way faster with those arms than everybody else is. And so that ends up being an important part of, and we talk about this a lot, of how you can go really from top end speed, drive phase, uh, you know, start phase obviously, is how your arms match your legs. I'm gonna quickly interrupt this video just to say if you like the information, go ahead and click that thumbs up, subscribe to the video, and we're gonna hop right back into it, right? And this is something that we even see with quarterbacks and throwing, right? It all makes a difference. So if you're fast with those arms, it's not like he's, he's shortened his arms, and that's what makes it difficult, right? A lot of people will want to try to get their arms going faster, and because of that, they end up shortening how much range they get within their arms, within their shoulders, but he does a great job of maintaining a good amount of range of motion. He's a little bit off to the side, more so with the left arm, right where he's pulling straight back with the right arm this is a common thing that we see that people end up having one side that ends up being a little bit more you know out to the side and the other one ends up being more straight and that seems to create more of that rotational movement makes it so you're working a little bit more on the transverse plane one of them one of the arms going straight and the other one going out to the side creates this ability for your body to create rotation which is really what creates power is having some degree of rotation. So this isn't something that's necessarily bad or something that you don't need. It seems like it is something that you 100% need is the ability to control moving side to side as well as being able to control moving in the sagittal plane. Because what happens is that, you know, once you start moving too much side to side, then you can end up crossing over your legs and, and really being inefficient with the movement pattern. So you have to understand how your body is 
able to utilize that frontal plane and moving side to side to help propel you to get forward faster and not making it so you end up taking a longer time to getting to, to point A or point B and you know really make it so you end up moving too much side to side. So there ends up being like a, a very, very specific point that's very specific to each individual of like how much side movement do you need to help you propel forward and how much side movement is going to end up making it so now you're off the edge and it's actually creating a negative feedback for you so you know that's really really important for you guys to be able to understand and, and to work on for each person so you know here he's already into his top speed right and, and he really ended up getting to his top speed probably a little bit earlier than everybody else here right which made it so then he separated himself so now you know because he was really quick out of here boom one two three so quick now he starts to really reach right so now because he's reaching and he probably could have been a little bit more patient through this drive phase i think he got really excited because of how good of a start that he had i think he could have been a little bit more patient here to make it so now he can get to his top speed and really hold that top speed because here he's at that top speed and he's really not able to maintain that distance from everybody everybody here is now really catching him where if he was a little bit later into it now he could go in and really start to to turn on the jets maybe here, right? Where before he started to kind of turn everything on about right here. So he started to separate himself here. Boom, gets that separation. Now he's at his top speed and he's just basically holding his top speed where these guys are just getting to their top speed, right? And so now that they're there, now they're catching him, right? And he really doesn't have too much that he can give. And you can tell he starts to kind of fatigue a little bit here at the end right and so we want to you know to me what would be the the coaching point would be stay in the drive phase a little bit longer or you know you want to be able to work at the, on that top end speed you know a, a little bit more i mean he's obviously somebody that can still run at a very high level but you know he, he wasn't fast enough to be able to win the gold medal and all that type of stuff and i think a lot of that has to do with you know how fast he goes from that start phase into the drive phase and then into you know maintaining his top end speed so you know there's a few things that you could maybe work on I, it would be tough to really you know say without actually being around him and training him on a consistent basis to really see what the flaws are this is just based off of this semi-final performance but yeah either way you know he ends up having an amazing start right just because and, and this is something again we talk about all the time quick first three steps right and then you want to be able to put a, a degree of reach back into it right so now you want to in that drive phase really put a premium on getting your feet out in front and reaching and i just think you could have done that for a little bit longer here instead of really train you know really quickly getting through that phase being a little bit more patient to be able to help you get to a 60. i mean no matter what he still ran that 60 in 6.29 seconds so that was the fastest 60 ever recorded so that was amazing feat that he did there he just ended up getting caught in that last 40 meters he still won right but that last 40 is something that you know he, he still wants to be able to work on and again some of it has to do i think with his height but you know it, it's, it's hard to say because there are guys that that are able to run at a high high frequency high you know speed rate um that are at his same height so it's hard to say that that is really the reason i think you know it more goes into staying patient in the drive phase than it is necessarily his height but you know it's hard to say because you know marcel jacobs ronnie baker are both you know obviously a good amount taller than him and, and have a lot more top end speed so there ends up being some strategy that goes into this as well 100 meters is a lot longer of a sprint than a lot of people i think realize you know it's easy to beat somebody when it comes to you know 40 yards when if you just have enough explosion but in 100 meter you know it takes that ability to maintain top end speed to really be able to excel in the 100 meters that's why those guys are just like 100 percent different you know like there's football players that are great i love doing the 40 yard dash as well and you get some great athletes in that but it's just a whole nother breed when it comes to running that 100 meter and being able to do that really really well and, and we saw that with dk metcalf and, and how you know he was able to perform against some of the best in the world so as always guys thanks for watching if you like the information go ahead and click that thumbs up down below subscribe to the channel if you have any questions comments or recommendations you can leave those down below i'm always saying hey check out the 28 day speed program it is a free speed program we're trying to help you guys get faster and more importantly i'm trying to get you guys to commit to a program that will help you in improving in any part of your your overall life not only will committing to a program like this help you in developing your speed which i know a lot of you guys want to improve on but it will also start the trend of when you commit to something you follow through and you get it actually
actually done to get it actually achieved. And I think that for your overall life, that ends up being a super important part of really being able to maximize your potential. You want to be able to set a goal, set a destination, set a place that you want to be able to get to, and then chase after that with 100% focus. And that's what we'll be able to do within this 28-day speed program. Would love for you to get a breakdown as well so we can get into the nitty-gritty of your mechanics and where you can make the biggest improvements there. You can do some drills, stuff like that. You'll be able to sign up with that after you sign up for the 28-day speed program. But that's going to be the most important. Get you get yourself into that speed program. I'm looking forward to helping you guys out. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Again, like this video if you like the information, and we'll talk to you soon.